The theme of today's discussion is challenges. Before you, you see my two babies. I've got my old reliable and what is written down here relentless and then I went to the trouble of look at down there lower left hand corner TS1 and then and then on this side above the tire it says TP35 if 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 you've been in that place you you, you see the the humor in that one time we had this idiot private that was uh go get the bumper number of that vehicle over there and he came back TP35 right up there with you see how i like to wander off right up there where there was this other idiot private and we were doing um the preventative maintenance whatever checks and services on a tank an abrams uh what was it uh an a1 or an a2 i don't remember but anyway it was like we need to check the track tension get behind the deck over there and push and see how much wiggle you have in it <laughs> and the dude did it now, it might surprise you that, yes, howitzers, at least the ones I was on, did have muffler bearings. So you can't get me on that one. Blending tanks and howitzers, both. More than one MOS. Anyway, moving right along, challenges. Now, I am on day five of surfacing trails with the electric powered cart. And another tangent, Elon Musk has this like new super motor, more efficient than um, previous, than the DC and the AC induction. It uses some kind of carbon wrap around the, the rotor, some mystical witchcraft kind of thing. He's got a car that can do zero to 60 in under two seconds. And the Chinese have come up with this battery that can be charged in a matter of minutes. So there you go. I'm on the cutting edge with my electric powered wheel bar. But anyway, I'm going to get back to challenges. Day five, and I'm <clears throat> way more than halfway done in the trails with the electric cart. But you know what? In my prime, in my magnanimous youth, I have surfaced the entire trail system, hand pushing that one, which doesn't hold as much as that. <laughs> Six days. That's my record. Six days. 130 miles, and that's what it takes for this. This one's less because it hauls more, but 130 miles of pushing in six days. And so, yes, Matthew, nephew, this old body is still doing all right. Yeah, in fact, I'm finding myself running now. The best way to shake the cobwebs off is to, like, hard physical labor. Panther, you were right. I love picking on people. <laughs> you know, a self-powered wheelbarrow is good. And now that I'm 61, I think it's about time that I had a little help. Where the heck was I going with this thing? Challenges. Okay. Before I get into today's challenge, bow and arrow challenge, we're going to picture a circle. Or, you know, a, an ellipse. That's the outer loop of our trail system. Center trail. The short trail down to the water. I might walk it today, show you the beach, and then walk up the trail so you can see the beauty of the new shredded bark. But this side of that half ellipse is a full half mile around. And on that half mile, there's a couple short sections of boardwalk, like 120 feet, wooden walkway, 36 inches wide, which presents a challenge, you know, when you can't really see the wheels on a side by side wheeled wheelbarrow but it also has an 840 foot section kind of near the back and so i walk 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 go over 840 feet of boardwalk that i don't need to surface because it's wood and then i've got to stretch the back stretch the longest stretch and then it goes up this hill push that thing up a hill loaded but anyway i've got four super heavy loads with that one i figure my personal challenge, because we have to keep pushing ourselves, is whatever I have left, I'm only going to push four loads of that big one. And hopefully I still have four loads in my pile. I've whittled away greatly. Whatever I have left, I don't have to, but I'm going to use that hand push wheelbarrow. 
personal satisfaction. Just to say I can, just to say on the longest stretch back there, up to that end of that long stretch of boardwalk, because once I reach that the end down there of that long stretch of boardwalk, right over yonder, then it's suddenly 840 feet less of pushing stuff. I, I, I refer to that as passing the boardwalks and not having to go over any more wooden walkway with my with my wheelbarrows. Challenge. I'm thinking, hmm, Matt says, bring up another challenge. Mattatula Matt. And I'm thinking, I'm in the phase of short bows. Matt likes short bows. A bunch of you like short bows. Nut thrower likes short bows. Flight shooting. Let's say, let's limit it to 50 inches. Your job, if you accept it, is to make a 50 inch or less bow. How far can you fling an arrow? Now I could add a certain number of grams to it. I'm assuming you're not going to be shooting um, styrofoam arrows. But arrows are also an integral part. Let's say it has to have a field point so it's not weightless, which you know if you've flight shot before you can't have weightless arrows because if you're using fletching it acts like a parachute. So there's kind of this this mixture that and I've seen it with my big ash longbow. If I'm using arrows that are beyond the sweet spot in um, mass, they won't go as far. If I use arrows that are too light, they won't go as far. There's a sweet spot. So in this flight shooting with your under 50 inch bow, 50 inches in below, you also have to understand arrows. Now I'm going to do that with both of my bows, the one that has the snake skin on it, the heavier one, and then the lighter 45 pounder, which is, I think, about 50 inches long, maybe a little less. Hey, it's lighter, but I'm getting a longer draw length with that lighter bow. And just to reiterate once again, saying something over and over again, is let us look at crossbows. In historical archery, Jack, if you're watching this, you fully understand it. You take a 1,000 pound draw weight European steel prodded crossbow, which is about as inefficient as you can possibly get, and you take a, a 300 pound draw weight long draw Asian crossbow, possibly even a hornbow, which one is going to outperform the other one? The Asian one. It'll shoot far beyond. It'll dog that heavy 1,000 pound short power stroke European style. You know, it's all power stroke is a big thing, the draw length. You might think that there's some magical quality. Well, yeah, it's not going to shoot as far but you can shoot super heavy arrows. And so there's more foot pounds of force landing. Well, no, there's no magical quality quality. It's like if you can take and they'll probably shoot almost the same weight of quarrel or bolt. The one that shoots farther, say everything being even, same mass of uh, bolt and shoot the same mass of bolt. Why not? That Asian one with the longer draw length will pack more punch. So it's not raw power. Um, you know who could probably really take a, sh a shorter draw, short bow, and make an arrow fly over 300 yards? Mark St. Louis. I don't want Mark St. Louis's name to fade into the, to the annals of history. Mark is still around. It's a great guy, lives in Canada, sold me a, a stave once, or two staves, I forget which one, of uh, elm, not rock elm. Mark's not going to part with his rock elm. It was American elm. But he has made the most fantastic, short, very short, rock elm flight bows, and these things, they launch rockets. Anyway, that's a challenge. Short bow, 50 pounds or less. How far can you make those arrows fly? And it would be super the duper cool if you had a video, a flight shooting video. And uh, I'm kind of limited. I can't do any flight shooting here anymore.
because we're open. Um, but I've, I've hawkeyed a couple other places where I can do some flight shooting and actually mark it off. I've got one of those wheel things that an engineering firm loaned me. That is all, as if this wasn't enough.